This tutorial covers solving exponential equations. When we talk about exponential equations, we mean an equation, so something with an equal sign. It's exponential, so something with an exponent. And then we're solving for the x. The way that we do this is we need to make sure that we have the same bases on either side. When we have the same base and it's equal, that must mean that the exponents are equal. So that's how we solve for an exponent. The only way that this doesn't really work is if a is any of these numbers. Okay, so let's try it out. Number one, we're going to solve. We have 3 to the power of x equals to 27. So we want the same base. And since this one has a base of 3, I'm going to try to make this one a base of 3 as well. Now 3 to the power of what is going to give me 27? 3 to the power of 3 gives me 27. Okay, so now they have the same base, and I can say that their exponents must be the same. But in order to do that, someone might say, well, what happened to these threes? They just disappeared. Technically, you can't go from this first step to this step. You have to add an arrow here, and that arrow means this indicates that. Okay, so that means that I understand that this line does not equal to this line, they're not the same, but this first line indicates that this is also true. Okay, so just remember to add that arrow to the left hand side. Negative 3 x plus 4 is equal to, and I want to make sure it has the same base, so also a negative 3. But negative 3 to the power of what will give you? negative 27. So we're using the same number, negative 3 cubed gives you negative 27. That indicates that x plus 4 is equal to 3. And let's just solve for x now. I'm going to bring this to the other side. And that means x equals to negative 1. Now you could always check your answer by taking your answer negative 1 and just subbing it back into the equation making sure that it does equal to negative 27 in the end. Okay, so C, 5 to the power of 4 minus x, and okay, so how do I make it so that it has the same base? Because I have to have 5 to the power of something that gives me 1 fifth. Well, it looks like the 5 flipped upside down to give the reciprocal of 1 fifth. And in order to do that, I need a negative exponent. So it looks like it's negative 1, because 5 to the power of negative 1 will flip it upside down, and the 5 will still remain a 5. Once the bases are the same, I can say this indicates that their exponents are the same. And then you're just going to solve for x. So move the 4 over. You still have negative x on this side. Minus 4, which is negative 5. And technically, this is a 1 multiplying that x. So I'm just going to divide it out on both sides. My answer is 5. Let's try some harder questions now. We already have the same base for this guy. That means we can go right away into the arrow. This indicates that the exponents are the same. So now we're just going to solve for x. 2x minus x, and we have 3 on this side. That means that 1x equals to 3. So that one seems simple enough. Now the next one is a hard question, and what I mean by that is, if I wanted to make sure that they had the same base, I might look at how to make a negative 32 out of negative 8 to the power of something. Now that's never going to happen because if you think about it, negative 8 squared already gets you to 64, and that's way higher than 32. So it doesn't really happen with the same base. How exactly are we going to solve something like this then? Well, there's a little bit of a trick, and that is maybe instead of using such a large base like negative 8, we might want to break it down into smaller numbers. Like, for example, 2 to the power of 3 is going to give me 8, and I just want to make sure that I incorporate the negative, so negative 2 to the power of 3 gives me a negative 8. I could also do the same with the 32. 2 to the power of 5 gives me 32, but again, it's a negative 32. So now I have the same base, negative 2. What happened to all this other stuff, though? 
Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my negative 8 and I'm going to put it in square brackets. Then I still have the other exponents on the outside. Equals to the negative 32 and also the exponents on the outside. So again, I'm really happy because the bases match. Now I'm just going to use my power rules. Here's a power of a power. And that means that I'm going to multiply these powers together. So I have negative 2, 3 times 1 minus 2x. So 3 times 1 is 3, and then negative 6x equals 2, negative 2. And again, power of a power means that I multiply my powers together. So 5 times 1 is 5. 5 times negative x is negative 5x. Now that the bases are the same, this indicates that one exponent is equal to the other exponent. And you just solve. So bring the 6 over here, you're going to get a positive 6. Bring the 5 over there, you're going to get a minus 5. Okay, so that's negative 2 equals to 1x. Again, you could always check your answer by subbing the negative 2 into your x's and making sure that both this side and this side balance. Okay, this last one is even more tricky because even though these bases are very small and rudimentary, you'll never be able to make an 18 and they're all never going to be able to match. So why don't we do one thing before we, I guess, decide to solve. So one thing is, let's get rid of that 2 by dividing it out because it's multiplying this bracket. Once the 2 is gone, we have to make sure that we divide the other side by 2. So that gives me 3y minus 2 equals to 9. Now it looks very easy because I know that 9 is just 3 squared. And I have the same base now. So that indicates that y minus 2 equals to 2. Bring that over and you add a 2, which means y equals to 4. So there's a couple of different tricks when solving for exponential equations, and that is you might have to divide out something first, or you might have to break down your bases to something smaller. Either way, don't forget your arrow. Try to make sure that both of the bases are the same before saying that your exponents are the same.